Hi, my name's Dale and welcome to Metal Tips and Tricks. This is going to be a Q&A from my last video talking about Michitoyo and Harbor Freight digital micrometers. But before I go in to the question and answers on that, I want to talk about Keith Fenner's What's in Your Toolbox giveaway. And Brad Jacobs organized a bunch of us YouTube creators to build tools for that. And I want to talk about and give thanks to the guys that helped me. We sent in one of these spindle squares to the toolbox giveaway. And it was really kind of a fun collaboration. And I want to give thanks to Glenn Fippel. He drew up all the plans and did an amazing job. Great, great collection of plans. I, I also want to say thanks to Brent Green. He built the box to keep this safe and just did an amazing job. Not only did he do an amazing job, he only had about two weeks to completely set up the box, cut it out, and also put a finish on it and mail it out. So he nailed it. It is great. And I also want to say thanks to Ryan Michelle. He did the back plates here. And these back plates, you look at them like, oh, what's the big deal? But think about trying to make a small aluminum disc and then drilling four holes. Because the challenge here, it's more of a clamping challenge. And he did an amazing job. And I got to say, guys, you have to go check out his video. There will be a link below so you can see that. And his channel is called IL Gopher. Um, Ryan, I don't know where you came up with that name. We'll have to have a conversation so you could tell me one of these days. But it is great. And also, when you're on his channel, click subscribe. I think there's some great, great stuff on it and some great problem solving. I think. And also, the last and most important person to thank is Keith Fenner. Keith, thank you so much. You've brought together the metal working community like nobody else has or could. And not just here in the United States, but all over the world, your videos are watched. And this toolbox giveaway, I noticed that several of them are going overseas. So that is just fantastic. So I want to say, Keith, thank you very much. And thanks for getting her done. Now, let's go into the Harbor Freight Mitsutoyo challenge. And remember, the question I posed was, which is better for the home machinist? The Mitsutoyo for, you know, several hundred bucks or the Harbor Freight? So here is Maximilian Orzit. I prefer Mitsutoyo. <laughs> and now we have, so, you know, we know where he's coming from. Also, we have Magic Rajava. So Mitsutoyo loses? I don't know. You know, it's really one of those great questions that only you can answer because it's up to you. It's your money. How do you want to spend it? Bob Shepard actually asked a great question. Well, what was conclusive? What is the battery life like? Well, that question was asked several times through these. I saw a lot of people ask that. Now, I've had mine for about three years. Now, I'm going to be honest, it doesn't come out very often. I don't use digital that often. And the reason I don't is there's too many zeros after <laughs> the, the decimal. And I kind of get lost and confused sometimes. And well, it only comes out on special occasions. So the battery I have has lasted about three years with minimal use. But I will say, the first two weeks I owned it, I tested it. Uh, I had it up in my office in Idaho, where the temperature of the office could fluctuate 30, 40 degrees in the day. And I set out a pair of blocks so I could test it. And I set up a whole chart so I'd test it in the morning, test it in the afternoon, test it in the evening. And through this time, all the temperatures were different. I did it for two weeks, kept an entire log of my entries, just like a scientist would. Not that I'm a scientist, but I do have a science degree. Huh. I forgot about that. Um, long, long, long time ago. But. I saw no true variance on that machine or that measuring gauge during that whole test. Every once in a while, it would be a ten thousandths off or a half a ten thousandths off. 
but very rare, and it's not, it wasn't bad enough to worry about. So I think it's actually a pretty good machine based on the price. Um, here's another one that agrees with me. Jeffrey Vastine. Great points, Dale. You would think that for the price of Mitsutoyo, would come up with a nicer box, preferably one made out of wood. Boy, you're preaching to the choir, Jeffrey. I agree 100% about that. David Cashin, boy, it's a hard one. I have both Mitsutoyo and Chinese brand and use my gauge blocks. Get no difference. The battery life on the Chinese one is a lot less, but out here in Australia, you pay a lot more than $200 for Mitsutoyo. So you can buy six of the Chinese ones for one Mitsutoyo. And that's really a good point. When you look at the Mitsutoyo, of course, is a lot better. But is it really that much better? And again, the question is up to you. And as you guys know, I've talked about, I have A gauges, which are my best, that almost never come out. And then I have my B gauges, which is really my go-to gauges. It's what I use on almost everything are the B gauges. But when it comes to super critical stuff, the A's come out. One last one from Oink079. I hope I said that right, because if not, I'm going to be in trouble. As a police officer and hobby machinist, I wouldn't have this hobby if it wasn't for the cheap tools and machinery. You know, that is a very powerful statement. And I'm also in that same situation. Ten years ago, the first metal lathe I bought was a little cheap Harbor Freight. It's a really tiny one. And if it wasn't for that, I probably never would have got into machining, especially at the level I'm in now. And I also want to say thank you so much for your service. I know the police officers in this country have really taken it have really gotten a negative rap through the media, and it's just not fair. They don't realize or they don't respect that you put your life on the line every day, and you may not come home to your family. And I just want you to know, I see what you guys do, and I really appreciate it, and I want to say thank you. So that's a close for another Q&A. All right, please subscribe to my channel now. Also, give me some thumbs up. Also, share this on your Facebook account if you would. I'd really appreciate it. All right, until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.